Welcome everyone to our 133rd webinar since we've started the webinars uh, back in March of 2020 and uh, been having a great time with these. Ray Studio 3 now um, is, is in production and we're, uh, we're going to be doing a series of webinars based on Ray Studio 3 and, and how to do things with it, right? Uh, our first one is how to uh, bring your, if you've been a user of Ray Studio 3 analysis and beta, of course, it was loading in an entirely different area. We it, that was everything was always separate, so that it had a separate database, it had a separate program, it had a separate icon. Um, just good fundamental tools to do when when you're doing something like this is to have all that separate, so we don't have uh, don't have problems. So so all of the stuff that you've been doing, if you've been using beta, and, and I know there's a lot of a lot of folks downloaded, and a lot of people have been uh, working with it, and um, and. If you've done that, now all of a sudden we've we've got Ray Studio 3 production up to speed. Analysis is in it. Uh, all uh, it's where you'll be wanting to go and do your um, do your work at the racetrack and and do all your data analysis work. But all of your all of your things that you've been working on are in the other uh, in the beta program. So we we thought we needed to put together a program where we talk about okay how do i transition over there right get all the stuff get my profiles my math channels my you know any map splits i may have saved and of course the data and um and so matt was uh matt, matt was uh, roped into joining us here today to talk about this because he's done this a few times and um so what what i thought we would do is just have a have a session on on just this that uh, some questions would be uh, would be welcomed. Uh, I think we're going to cover all the, the the good basic ways of doing things, but uh, yeah, some questions and some uh, uh, tips and tricks. If you if you've done something and and want to share them, make sure you throw it uh, throw it into the question box, and we'll we'll try to cover it. But uh, let's start with uh, just a quick introduction of Matt. Matt Matt's been here. This is the fifteenth time of doing one of the co-hosting with us. Now we've done a lot of them, but but fifteen's a pretty big number, big commitment. We appreciate. Matt doing that. Um, Matt, it's been uh, great having you here. You're you're deep into um, to working with us all the time, so it's uh, great to leverage your knowledge. Thanks for helping us out again this week. Oh, no problem. These are a ton of fun. We've got a great community going here, and uh, I really like doing them. This is fun. It's probably as fun for me as it is everyone to learn everything and, and to be able to share it. Yeah, I appreciate that as well. We do have a great group that comes here. We're 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 recording this live on a Tuesday, uh, Tuesday uh, mi mid morning on the on the Pacific Coast, uh, one o'clock uh, uh, on the East Coast. But a lot of people don't get to watch them live, and they're watching them later in uh, uh, on YouTube. And but we there is a chat box here, and uh, and we've got a, a good sized group that comes to all of these uh, from all around the world, and everybody's getting to know each other, and it's uh, it's been wonderful. But what we'll mention if I ever say we you know. Uh, that there's a uh, a link has been shared in the in the um, in the chat box. Everything I whether I say anything like that about, just go down to the description box down below in the YouTube video, and all of those links plus more will be there as well for uh, to cover anything that we talk about. So, it uh, it will be good. Okay, so Matt, I'm gonna uh, you, actually we didn't chat about this. You want me to run the uh, run this from here? Or do you, would you like the like control of the mouse? I'm good either way. Okay, cool. well, uh, I'll, I'll just run it from here, and um, um, uh, and Matt will take over, and we're just going to walk our our way through why should you move over and uh, and how to do it. So I'll just turn it over to Matt, and we'll go from there. Perfect. And like Roger said, this presentation's in the comments on YouTube if you're watching it there, so you can grab the presentation and all the information. And I try to make the presentation a reference material, so if you get stuck or you're not sure where to click, you can go back to that, pull it up and kind of walk through things as you're doing it. Um, so today's topic is we went from Race Studio 3 beta to now it's in production. And it's kind of the gold copy to the white copy sometimes is what I, I tell people. Um, the production version is great. Make the switch now. If you're in the beta all the time, get over to that white copy, install it. Um, Jeff has a question if we, or I, I'm sorry, I think it was Jeff's, and then there was another one in there about, do we need to uninstall the beta to get the production? And the answer is no, they're totally separate. The beta is the beta version, and it kind of runs in its own development path, and the production is the most stable, and it runs in its own folder and, and directory and everything else. So they're totally separate. You can have both of them. Um, but as you'll see, I tell everybody, you really want to jump into that production. Um, 
it's the most stable. It's the one where we want to be. And we'll talk about that in a minute. And Jeff's so, question even goes a little bit deeper, Ray Studio 2, right? And we're gonna, again, uh, uh, we're going to do an entire webinar in a few weeks of, of people that are coming from, have did not use the beta and are, are going to try to come from Ray Studio 2 to Ray Studio 3 production. And um, uh, Jeff's question is, is it, should he, is it stable enough to move all of his Ray Studio 2 data over? I, I think yes, no doubt about that. Uh, but I also would say, uh, on the Ray Studio 2 side, there's some settings that we may look at uh, a little bit later to, that will take your data when you download your data in Ray Studio 3, your current you know, uh, generation of hardware that uses Ray Studio 3 to download. You can check a box where it'll just put a copy in Ray Studio 2 if you're used to using that and in mm -hmm. Ray Studio 3 production. And then the data is in both. And if you're doing something in Ray Studio 3 and it doesn't have a function you want, you can just snap over, open Ray Studio 2. All of the data files you've downloaded will be there for you to, to look at that session and, uh, and, and, and finish it if, if you don't know how to in Ray Studio 3 or the functionality is not there. So. Yeah, and it, it was one I went through with a couple people the, uh, two weeks ago at the track is this is, Ray Studio 3 is such an upgrade. It's such a great piece of software. If you're not using it, if you didn't use the beta, just make the jump. Like you, you, you will be very happy that you end up making this jump and you'll be happy with the results you get out of it. So I think the sooner you do it, the happier you're going to be doing it. And you might as well start learning all those new tools that are available to you. And Ray Studio 3 is just enough alike like Ray Studio 2 that you should be able to, yeah, there's some different options and functions and slightly different ways of getting things, but the general look and feel of Ray Studio 3 is, is very similar to 2. So you, uh, the, the transition is not as hard as what you might think. So, right. okay. I um, think you've already touched on that one a little bit. Yeah, so, you know, 99% of people should really be in the production. That's gonna have production firmware, that's gonna have all the, the fully tested, um, firmwares, features, all the things that you want to use. Um, the beta is really for that small percentage of people that wants to be kind of on the cutting edge to try the new things, but also to understand that um, there could be untested features that do cause problems. Um, so firmware updates, all that stuff, always in the production. The analysis, there might be new features in there, but you also have to understand that there might be bugs that haven't been fully flushed out and checked and everything else. So that's kind of part of the, let's move everybody to the production version and get everything going there. Um, as you talked about, you know, make the change now, jump into production. So um, as we want to move all these things over, um, what stuff is there? So it gives us a chance to look at what we have and what we want to move and how we want to do it. So the big view of kind of what we're going to look at today is let's review where our data is located and where ours through beta put it. Um, and if you're coming from Ray Studio 2, it's a thing you're going to do the same process of trying to figure out where your data is so you can move it in. Um, see how your movies are handled because there's a couple ways we can bring movies in and then transfer over all these settings that we had in Ray Studio 3 beta that we might want, like our profiles, configurations, if we made them there, custom sensors, CAN protocols, math channels, the data. And I think this also gives us a chance to look at how we handle this data and say, does it make sense to use some sort of cloud storage for our data and other things? Um, and I think the next slide is where I, I lay out an, an idea of how we can do this. So whether you use Dropbox, OneDrive, Google, um, there's so many options there that I don't necessarily um, look at all those ways to do it. I'm not an IT guy. So I've used Dropbox. I use OneDrive. I have a Google Drive account. Whatever one you like, think about being able to put your data there. So you, maybe you have a, a, a master folder called AIM, and then you can put in subfolders and have all your CAN information, your configs, the data, the profiles, the sensors, the tracks, and the map channels. Um, this is a great way if you're a person who maybe has a laptop for the track, a computer in the shop or at home, multiple laptops, when you share it across that cloud drive, you can then grab that information everywhere. Um, it makes that part really easy for you to transfer those settings and everything else across. Um, I think that is a, a really powerful way to be able to have the same information on multiple computers and, and do all that. And we'll see the different ways. 
Um, and there, the, the I always think of I'm uh, I, I'm uh, I'm not great at the computer side of it either, but I always think of a cloud drive and, and that I need internet connection in order for that to work. But the way that um, all all of these systems work, Dropbox, OneDrive, Google, Google Drive, all of them have that option of being able to do these updates and keep everything synced, and and keep a copy uh, uh, on the hard drive of the individual machine, even if it's off offline. So that uh, there are some settings there that would maybe need to be done because I don't know if it would be great when we go to a track with a laptop to not have the data local, right? So it uh, right. so the the whole point would be to put it out on the cloud, but have have that folder that aim that single aim folder you're looking at here that you've put everything under. To be to be held local and updated every time that it gets uh, within uh, you know, on on the internet. So certainly, and that and that's how I do mine is I keep everything local on my computer and then it backs it up to the the cloud where it exactly. is. Exactly, perfect. Um, okay, and you know, a great way to share data with your friends and all those things. Um, so, in Ray Studio three beta, how do we figure out where that information? Is? So the gear and or the um, wrench and the screwdriver top left. When we click on that, we can then go to data download. And when we click that, it brings up the next window and it shows us all our download options. And when we look at this one, what's important is the first spot we see where it says root folder for download, that tells us where our information goes. So you can see my personal information and, and all the race teams I work with, it goes to a OneDrive and I call it Race Studio 3 data. Um, I download load everything there and then it gets separated by the date and the racer. Um, so it's backed up to the cloud. Yep, under full structure. So I, I have it all there to see how it goes. Um, so when we wanna import our data, we can then, we know this is the spot to go. Um, the one that people don't always look for is the movie download. So if you import your movies to Race Studio 3 beta, they're kept in their original location. If you download it off the SD card, it brings it in the same as a data file and it's gonna copy that to the location that you have on your computer. Um, so this is a time where when I do that, it puts it in the same folder as my data, but you can configure it differently. And one of the ones I actually learned from Emiliano was that um, he keeps a little portable hard drive with him. And there's a number of them now that you can get really big hard drives that are really small, Velcro it or tape it to the back of your laptop and put maybe all your movies onto that drive. Um, that's a really easy way to not fill the hard drive on your computer, but to keep all those videos. So you plug it in, you have all your stuff. Um, that's that, I've, uh, that, that's been a worry for me is the the video files add up in a hurry, right? And 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 I've always been buying laptops as powerful and as much RAM and 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 horsepower that I can get there, but small on the uh, on the hard drive size because that would you know becomes a little bit uh, better uh, financially and then you know here's a here's a little sd drive that i that i have used in the past this is like three or four years old i'm sure they're smaller now this is very easy that like matt mentioned is just uh, velcro this onto the to the to the lid of your computer or whatever put it or, or have it in your bag and just plug it in right but but this is pretty darn small and you could have the movies uh, hanging out on this and as long as it's a high speed ssd drive Every time you go to 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 watch them and and, and bring them up, everything's going to work well. So, I would keep the data local in in the folder structure that uh, that uh, that Matt talked about. But but uh, maybe the videos on on the SSD just as he just as he explained. I, I they're small enough now and cheap enough now that uh, well maybe with with the pandemic stuff that's been going on, maybe memory is a little harder to get right now. But uh, boy, if you have something like that or a nice tiny one, it's uh, it's it's really worth it. Yep. Um... So then once we know where those all go, it again, same slide we looked at before is just because you had always done it one way, it's a time that we can reevaluate it. So if you don't put things in the cloud, maybe take a little bit, think about, does it make sense for me to do that? Does it make sense that I can share data with other drivers, with other team members? Um, if you work with a coach a lot, it gives you a chance to do that. So a uh, different way to think about it is just because we always did it one way, you know, we're making a change from the beta to production, maybe from Race Studio 2 to Race Studio 3. So take a little bit of time, think about, does it make sense to make this change with everything now too? Because we're setting up our new version of Race Studio to have all this. I'm, I, I'm, I'm happy that Matt is doing this. He, you know, he's talking about not just how to move from beta to production, but boy, now's a good opportunity to maybe clean up a little bit of what you do, the way you store things, uh, uh, fantastic. 
Right. And, you know, as we collect more and more data, my data files are sometimes uh, 10, 15, 20 gigabytes worth of data, right? And then we add the videos to that and That's we end up with these really big files. So quickly we can create this kind of volume of information. Um, so it's a good chance to evaluate, is it working for you? Is it something you want to change? And look at all those. And even um, if you're not doing it on the cloud, this gives you an opportunity to back up one folder. If you do yeah. it in this way, uh, you know, your, your, your weekly backups or whatever it happens to be, or you know, maybe, maybe you're like me and you don't back up as often as you, as you should, but maybe it's monthly or something, but this gives you an opportunity to, to, to back everything up pretty quickly. Yeah. And something I should have put in here, um, if you don't use a cloud service, if you don't want to, just get rid of the idea of having that cloud right there and just start exactly. making a folder and do it right to that. But exactly. the idea and the process is the same. The location can change. And, you know, file names, the folder names, I put these because it's how I think and how I go through the software. But you can call it anything you want. There you go. And put um, it anywhere you want. Right. Yep. So then when we go to import our data, and this is the data. Like, so when we've downloaded our data into... Race Studio 2, Race Studio 3, Race Studio 3 beta. When we want to import it now, we go to our um, sessions tab or our sessions view on the full left, the cogged wheel, and then we say import. And when we do that, it's going to pop up with another box. We get to pick, do we want to import a folder or a file? Um, if you know a specific, you only want one folder, maybe you're at the track, you want to do this quickly you can grab one. If you're making the change and you're bringing all your data in, grab the whole folder. Um, something a lot of people haven't realized as they've been making this switch, if you do the folder and the file is already in Race Studio 3 production, it won't duplicate it. You'll get a window, it pops up and it says uh, something like 400 files selected, 10 duplicates, 390 imported. So it'll tell you that you had duplicates, but it's not gonna recreate all that information on there. So the folders a really expedient way to do it. Yeah. Um, I think I brought in about a thousand files when I did it and it took maybe, it was surprisingly a lot faster. I thought it was going to take all night and it took maybe two hours. It was pretty quick. Um, so a great way to just grab a whole folder. And if you use that kind of architecture I laid out before, or maybe you have aim and then data, you grab that main data folder, it grabs all the subfolders for you. So it's a really slick process that works great. Um, and one other thing that I, I thought uh, Emiliano showed it a few times. I haven't <clears throat> I haven't done it much myself, but say say you're in Ray Studio three and you're in this area where you've got uh, you're, you're you're ready to import. Instead of doing the the import button, you can just open up a Windows Explorer file uh, window, right, and mm -hmm. where all your data is, and you can just grab the datas or the folders of data and just drag them with your mouse and just drop them on this window right here, and the same exact process happens, right? So it's a, uh, uh, there is a drag and drop functionality where you just grab a folder, bring it over here and drop it, and then it, it, it does the data that's in that folder and all the subfolders below it as well. So very, very yep. quick and easy if you want to. It's a, right. It can be done very quickly. Um, and to grab Kyle's question real cool about the cloud sharing is check with how that service that you use works. Most of them, I believe, let you keep it locally. And then when you have internet, it will upload and, and make a copy to the internet, but you control exactly. it locally. Um, and it, that is but, very, very helpful. Even on my own m machines here, I, I do that. I, I've got a couple of just critical stuff that if right. the internet's out, I've got a couple of folders that are just always being updated with uh, with my you know, documents and, and data, yeah. uh, uh, even on my home machine. It's being it's being actually used on the cloud, but I but I put local. And you can just check a box and make that directory local. Right. And Tim's question about um, if you move the, full, the files and re-import them, is maybe a good question. Maybe Emiliano can help us with that answer and, and type it in there or give us to us in the chat um, to make sure we answer that one correct. Correctly, yeah, um, exactly. And we'll grab that. But if we go now to the next slide, we'll see, you know, here you can pick a folder and it's gonna grab all that data. And like Roger said, we can just drag and drop it in into the summary section if we want as well. Um, I never think to drag and drop, but it's a great way you can do it. Neither do I. I do it the way you're doing. You just select the data folder. Yeah. It's kind of weird. It works a little different than some programs, but it's it's asking to, for the folder name. So when you click on it, it's going to plug in there. You're just going to select it, and you're off and running. So right. 
and then uh, that whole entire process will happen. And now, boom! All the all the data is shown up in uh, in your in your windows. And now Matt's about to start uh, working on the next step. I mean, it's done that quick and easy. That yep. Matt is over to doing the uh, profile exports now. <laughs> so right. So now when we're in Race Studio three beta, and if you've been using Race Studio three analysis beta, you've built some profiles you really like, and I know a lot of people here have done it. Roger and I have shared so many of them and you wanna move them over to production. There's two ways we can do it. And the first one is we can go in, in our full session view, we can grab um, the cog wheel in the summary area, profiles, we can pick the profile we want and we can export it. Now we can do this, that open to- this long list and it'll, you can grab right. the one, you're, one you want. So you can see someone like me, I've got you know, 10, 15 yeah. profiles there. So I can share them all. So if you wanna export them all to a folder, you can click the export button. And then when we hop over to import them um, in production, it's the same deal. Click the cogged wheel, and then we just import profiles. And we can grab as many as we want. So we can sit in production, export them all, and then import them all. Um, Very quick, again, easy step, actually. It's super fast, super easy, lets you grab them all. Um, the next way that we can do it is through sharing them with um, our cloud account. So it's one of the ones we've talked about before. You can see on this screen that um, Race Studio 3 signs me into my cloud account with AIM under trail break. And then we are able to share these profiles to our cloud. Right now, there's some behind the scenes work going on to make this process a little bit better. So in the current version, it's not going to work for you. Um, I believe in the next version of production that's coming out pretty soon that Emiliano's talked about a little bit in the chat today. This is going to be enabled again. Um, yeah, it has worked in the beta, it has worked in the beta for quite some time. So yeah, we, we know it's and, coming. Um, what's really great about this feature is we can go to that profile and instead of clicking export, we just go to share, and then when we hop over to production, it's as easy as um, choosing. If we hop to the next slide, Roger, I did. Oh, okay. See, it's this easy. I didn't even notice. <laughs> It looks the same though, to be it looks fair. The, same because the, the software is so similar. It, it no. just converges no. on so many things. No. It's really easy. We can go in, view all the, you'll see now it has profiles shared with other PCs and we can very quickly pick the ones that we want for this computer and import them. Um, or delete them or work with them, right? You can do anything, but yep. you import them or delete them at that point. Super slick, super easy way to jump through these. Um, and these profiles now that, the power of Race Studio 3 is so great that I know a lot of people spend a lot of time working on these profiles and getting them tweaked to how they want. They have a multiple tabs and multiple views. Um, don't lose it. Use either the share function or the export and bring them over. Um, it Profiles, I think, in Race Studio 3 is one of the most powerful features of analysis and will really change how you do everything. Um, I've, I've, I'm having, uh, and we'll talk about that in, in in some future webinars. But there are there are ways. Do you use multiple tabs, or do you or do you do what I I have felt more comfortable with is just uh, just using more profiles, right? Just because they're so easy mm -hmm. to load and so quick that maybe you only have a tab or two in a in a view that you're using. And now I want to go look at my oil pressure. D don't just put another tab on it for a scatter plot. Go ahead and make another one that says oil oil pressure, you know, analysis or something, right? And uh, and keep it fairly thin and and use a lot more profiles. Uh, it's uh, different people like to work different ways, so, and you can do it either way. Yep, it, it, one of the ones you can see, I worked kind of on the single tab for a long time. Exactly. And I'm starting to build more that have more tabs. I'm getting Me used too. to the, the extra Me too. power. Um, Me too. <laughs> but try it out. Like if you run in both versions, it's one of the ones. Experiment, share it between your computers. Play with it at night, play with it at the track, see what works because it's it's one of the best features to make your time most useful and easy. If you've used profiles in the past, the the um, gosh, maybe a month or so ago, the uh, the the saving of a profile, uh, it, sometimes it took five, you know five five seconds or something, right? When you hit save profile, uh, and um, and that now has been sped up to the point where I can't see it that when it's saving it. I mean, I, I press save profile or save a new one to a different name. You give it the name, and uh, and it's 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 uh, it's instantaneous. It's to, so it's to the point where uh, I feel like I'm get, not getting slowed down at all by having you know 15 different profiles for the specific things I like to do. Yeah, and um, before we jump to the next one after profiles, I see Ben's question, and it's talking about the data import. I think. 
Um, that's where there's a distinct difference between um, importing the data and downloading the data. And the, the names sort of speak to it. If you import the data, it keeps the data or a movie in the same location that it was, and it just references where that is. So if you had it under my computer videos, it keeps it in that video folder. If you use the download function, it downloads it just like it was a, a data file that you were grabbing from your MXP or your MXL2 solo 2, and it copies it to the location that we looked at. Um, so the answer, does it duplicate it? It might, it depends on how you bring in that video whether you download or you import. Yeah, if um, you download it, it makes a second copy. If you import it, it just is a, putting a trigger out to wherever you, you told it it's at. Correct. Good point, good point. Great um, question, thank you. Yeah, so move your profiles. They're great. You've probably built some really awesome ones. If not, grab some of the ones from some of the previous videos and check them out. Um, math channels. If you've got in here and you've built some math channels and you wanna export them, um, I think the easiest way to do this is in the full view and you can see it behind a little bit. I'm not in a particular session. I'm in the general oh. race studio three area. Don't even have a test open. Yep. Don't You're even have a test open. Yeah. Click on the math channel button. And then what's pretty cool. And I think I'm excited for next week because when they start to share all the new details of the math channel engine, we're not limited to having all these different, uh, totally separate sets of how we kind of used to have to work yeah. if we had different loggers and different cars. Now we can have all these subdivisions in there. And when we go to export, it gives us the same thing that we can pick individual math channels. We can pick all the math channels. We can pick subgroups that we've created in the math channel list. We can click it for a logger. There's all these built-in functions. So we don't have to try to subdivide things and pick and choose. We can put it together. Um, so we pick in kind of step two here, what we want to export, and then we can click export. We get to pick a folder and, and put it out there. So, you know, here I kind of showed if you're using Dropbox, you could have a name folder with your math channels. Um, well, if I, you're on, on the hard drive, it would just, you know, the C, yep. C under bar user and then a mass, right? So but yeah. the, the, the aim and then the subfolder of all these different things is going to be is, is what, what you've been talking about the entire time. And we'll see the rest of today. Right. And when we look at doing this, um, I kind of come race studio two, where you're always nervous about maybe rewriting or overwriting of the math channels that you already had and everything. I still kind of have it in me as backup often, you know, backup early, backup often, backup extra, just to be careful. <laughs> so this is a great one. If you've built some math channels and you like them, um, export them, do the same thing if you're in race studio two. So then when we go to import, we can grab them. Um, and this one, we see the same thing is we click our math channel button. Instead of export, we click import. We grab our channels or our, our set of math channels and we um, click open. Brings them all in. Um, Oops, it doesn't give you a, a, a final slide. But the um, uh, just, just to cover what Matt mentioned a minute ago, uh, you're, you're going to see a slide here at the end of this next week is an entire hour about the the Ray Studio 3 math channel functions and uh, they are again uh, th that one is one of those functionality that uh, does not look and feel a ton like uh, what Ray Studio 2 math channel look like right so, syntax and some of the stuff is going to be uh, uh, everything's a bit different so uh, if you if you use math channels Boy, join us next week. We're going to talk about that, and uh, it's going to be a, a very powerful hour. It's the one area certainly that I have not done much work with yet, so it's uh, I am I am really looking forward to it as well. And Matt, what about Race Studio Two Math Channels? What if you had a whole folder, a whole series of math channels you spent years putting together? You really like them. What do you do then? Same exact import process. You can import them all into here, and you can actually see boom, is the boom, list of uh, ones I have here came from Ray Studio 2. I was trying out the import feature. I grabbed one of the sets I had, brings them all in, super easy. Well, Ray Studio 3 math, what this import function does is it 
AMC was the Ray Studio 2 Math Channel uh, extension. And mm -hmm. so it's looking for either one of them. And, it, and if you told it you had an AMC or the AJMC, which is the new the new uh, new version for Ray Studio 3, it will just bring in your Ray Studio 2 ones just like you did. It will it will do all the conversions in the background and boom, they will be in your Math Channel functionality for Ray Studio 3. So if you have old ones that you've been you rely on, uh, go ahead and bring them on in. It's very, very yep. easy, very easy. Okay. Super powerful. And, you know, it's such a time saver. It was one of the worries that a lot of people had was being able to bring all those Race Studio 2 math channels you had over. It brings them right in. It's going to be a really cool session to, to watch. And we will talk more about that, obviously, uh, uh, next week. And then uh, and in the Race Studio 2, uh, if you're a user of Race Studio 2 analysis and coming into 3, obviously, it's something we'll cover in that uh, in that <clears throat> seminar as well. Okay, yeah. Matt. By the way, Matt, your your time is going well. I am clicking ahead of where you think you are, but uh, it's not to rush you. It's to just uh, <laughs> make sure you have the right slide up in front of you. So I, I I have I've clicked pretty quick a couple of times. So to, I'm not trying to rush. We you. are all good. I think um, we are. Configurations. If you've built configurations in Race Studio Three Beta, is um, this is I think another important spot that sometimes catches people up. If you built a configuration in Race Studio Three Beta. Do just as I show here is select the ones you want to export and export them. Um, that is the better practice than pulling them from the dash. When we export them this way, it gets all that information. It gets all the, the details we wanted in the software and, and puts them to a central location so we can re-import them. Um, it removes a lot of the possibility of uh, something happening to the the configuration, whether it loses a bit or a byte or something goes wrong in transferring it or maybe it gets corrupted in the dash and we have a problem. When we start, when we keep it right from the software and kind of only go one way, it keeps that um, a little cleaner. Just so, less steps, right? And I, while yeah. I haven't seen a ton of problems, you know, bringing, you know, hooking up to the logger and just bringing them in that way, I, I have uh, seen no problems doing it this way. And, and it certainly is less steps and a cleaner process. So. And, and as a whole process of converting or moving from the beta to the production one is I did these export import just so it was really easy to follow the steps and keep, you know, configurations together and profiles together. But if you're doing this, go through, open up Race Studio 3 beta, export your math channels, export your profiles, export your configurations, go through and do all those and then hop into the production copy. And then just import them, right? We're not, you don't have to go back and forth and do one at a time. Because, um, and, and, and uh, maybe nobody has tried, maybe there are some folks out there who haven't tried this, but you can't open Race Studio 3 beta and Race Studio 3 production at the same time. There are some correct. shared resources. So when Matt is talking about this, uh, you may want to just go into beta, export all of the different things we're talking about now, and then go in and import them all. We're for for yep. uh, the, the sake of simplicity, we're uh, we're walking through each step, but uh, you probably wouldn't do it that way, right? Okay, and certainly, like I, I didn't agree. make the webinar that way, right? When I did all my screenshots, I I did all my exports and I did all my imports. Yeah, all good. Yeah. I think that, I think you did it the right way. Yeah. Okay, so here you're exporting them. You just go in and uh, and you go to your configurations, hit yep. the X, you know, select the ones you want to go. You can do multiples. You can do all. You can do one or two, right? And mm -hmm. then, and then hit the export button, and then. Um, and then we just go, we click import, we grab them from that folder, and it brings them all in. Super, yeah. super easy. Yep. Very fast, too. It's uh, very, very quick. Yep. Okay. Um, tracks. Now, I don't know how many people have gone into to making custom tracks. Um, you can see I've got, I picked one super simple one here. Um, these are actually my son's test tracks for his bicycle. <laughs> and uh, you can see the their point to points, and um, he picks the names. So to export the tracks, we find the track we want, and this is one where um, I use the search box because I knew these were in here, and I knew I didn't have too many custom tracks. So I pop it in the search bar in the search box, pull up the track, and then you can select to export it. It's just a little tip that I that I have found. I I. I... The search box in Race Studio 3 is so powerful in all different spots, but in, in the tracks, be sure, and because this has bit me a couple of times, you've got your filtering functionality over here. Mm 
And if you have hit this little cogged wheel and you've told it, I only want to be viewing cart tracks, you know, uh, for, for this, whatever reason, uh, when you do your search, it's only uh, searching on the stuff you've filtered it down to. So, uh, so keep that in mind. There's been times I have searched for a track that I know is in there and it's like, what in the world? And, uh, and then I come over here and I've told it just with me, I'm, I'm real close to Canada. A lot of, a lot of, uh, I have a lot of phone calls and conversations with folks from Canada, and maybe I've only turned on North America and then just the United States, and then I'm searching for a track just across the border, and it's it's not in there, and I, I, I forgot I, I turned Canada off. So yep. uh, j just a tip there on your searching. And a really cool thing I think that's in here that's not related to production or beta, um, a lot of people I don't think have noticed next to the tracks tab above the map is the weather forecast. If you're like me and you have ReStudio 3 open almost all the time, you can hop in there and I know uh, in a week I'm going to Charlotte. I can pull up the Charlotte track, click the weather, and it gives me the weather for that track. A really neat closest little weather there. station to the track that, that it's yep. a very it's very uh, there's a lot of them out there obviously so you're even not just picking charlotte you're picking the one that's closest to the track so it's pretty handy. It, it, right um and, and it's there for every track like yeah. i was going through here you know it'll pull up the weather for my house and yep. it'll pull up the weather for walking the glen um we can see that jeff said it was sunny in boston it's it's a super <laughs> neat feature um, exactly okay so then to import our tracks opposite process the one key here though and i didn't realize this till i was doing everything was you need to be in the largest groups so that arrow with the one on the top left you need to be in the nations in that top tab to bring everything over um yeah this if you're in a smart collection or a manual collection it won't let you import these so in the nations tab click import and then grab the track or the the set of tracks that you exported um for a lot of people there might not be anything here that you want to grab it might you might not have ever made a custom track but if right. you did it's probably important to you a really great way to export it and import it back in perfect perfect and again just import it <clears throat> select the the track or tracks and, yep. and uh, select uh, and, and hit open boom it's done it's it really right. is that eat fast and easy Blame, blame, yeah, yeah. Tim says I can blame Canada, South Park, yeah, South Park, <laughs> uh, a South Park reference. Uh, <laughs> custom sensors. I, the, I, there are, there are a lot of people that have a lot of custom sensors. It's one of those things that I think people use more and more than what, uh, uh, as we find a, a, a custom sensor that works out there. In the past, I've not had people wanting to move custom sensors around, but it seems to be much more popular nowadays. So we have a process you've built. You've spent a lot of time creating those. We need to get them over. Yeah. And, you know, you can see one of the most popular ones that has been coming up for me a lot recently yep. is fuel levels. fuel levels. Yep. And you can see my first four there are fuel level right off of that. Yep. Because um, they're so individual to that to that car, right? So uh, and yeah. a lot of a lot of endurance racers really want a, a good a good fuel level sensor. So you end up building a lot of them. Right. And they take a lot of time. So this is something yeah. you've invested in, and you yeah. built this great model of your sensor. You know the values. Save it. Make sure you have it. You know both backed up and in the copy in the production copy that you're going to use super easy is the the one where i have the button one you can pick the very top um box and it'll select everything underneath or you can pick the individual ones and then export them out yep and then hit um, the export none are selected yeah. right now so it's grayed out but as soon as one is one or more is selected it's it's not grayed out and you boom you click it yep so okay. you know you might be somebody like me that uh has sort of a test sensor that you were playing with it's not yep. important it's, it gives this gives you a chance to get rid of sort of that junk if you hadn't deleted it and then move over what you want. Um, and then the import process is as easy as clicking import and then selecting the set that you want. There you go. Um, and you've got them saved under the sensor folder. Yep. And being able to move these, I think, is if you've done it, it's important. Please move them so you don't lose that at some point or have any sort of problem. Um, 
And just as many things that we're talking about moving from beta to production, maybe you've got a buddy or a race team member and, and they want your profiles. The, the same exact process works, right? You, yep. you go out, you export it, you send the, that file over to them, uh, email. You know, most of these are actually fairly small uh, or you know through some sort of a cloud uh, share situation with them. Mm -hmm. They grab it, they bring it into theirs and they, they boo, they're, they're off and running. So this, uh, everything we're sharing here, yeah, it's from beta to production, but it's, uh, it's moving things around and, and getting things set up. Yeah, it's the same thing. If you've got two computers that are both on production or both on beta, you can use the same exact process to move everything in and out and go between all the computers. Uh, I noticed a question there, a comment from Steve. We're talking about uh, fuel level sensors. Uh, Steve Martin, uh, give me, give me a, Drop me an email. You, you'll have my email here in the end. I've, I've, I've got some tricks I do with the fuel pressure, set, fuel level sensors that have worked really well for me. Uh, so let's, uh, uh, the whole negative thing when you get down down to near the bottom or, or, or an odd number at the top, there's a couple little things we can do. We won't talk about uh, in detail here, but give me a holler later and uh, I'll chat with you about that. Um, can protocols. Maybe not a spot that everybody's worked in a lot, but if you've done it, you know how much work you've put into everything and how you've worked to kind of refine these, get them in your configuration. So make sure you export them. Um, yeah. And again, just like the sensors, you can pick one or you can pick all and you can export them out. Um, see a trend here, don't we? They, they, they've built every, everything. <laughs> I, I realize some of you might be sitting here going, you know, geez, you know, it's kind of, uh, you're saying the same thing. Well, which is kind of cool. That is the same yeah. thing. But we wanted people to be able to come in and, and uh, pick their, their own little piece they wanted to look at instead of looking at it holistically. So it's, it's all well, good. Yeah. And also just kind of the methodical process so you don't get to the track. Because I know I did it a bunch of times. I get to the track. And then I'm looking at the beta. I'm in the production, but I knew I had it in the beta and I'm trying to grab everything. So it's a yeah. nice chance to just sit down, do everything in one fell swoop. So then when yeah. you open up at the track and it's high stress and you're, you don't have a lot of time, everything's set up and ready for you. Yeah. Um, that, that's really my goal for this is that when you get there, you're set and you're ready to use the production and not have to go back to the beta and be flipping and flopping in between everything. When the stress level is high, you uh, you don't need to be adding more to it. Right, or wonder why it doesn't work, right? Because yeah. then you're questioning, is it me? Is it the software? Yeah. It's really, you're just in the, the wrong version. You made a little mistake. Yeah. Um, here, to import your CAN configurations, is it's as easy as click import. One of the things I wanted to highlight that we've talked a little bit about in the various webinars is you can also import DBCs here. So if you're working on a, a CAN protocol, for some non-AIM system or an ECU and somebody gives you that DBC file, you're able to then import it and go with it. Um, super neat feature to go through everything and um, bring a lot of information in without using a lot of clicks, you know, and having to, to set all these things. Um, the next one here is, comes with a major warning. <laughs> if you don't need to lock things, don't lock them. It can create a lot of challenges in going through everything. And if you are in that very small percentage of people that needs to do this, it's critical that you export the authorizations and the keys. If you don't have those exported, the locked items you did um, can't be recovered. And that means you have to send the dash in and they um, have to completely wipe it clean and you start from scratch and you lost all of it. So if you're not in here, it's really important when it's important and it's important not to use it if you don't need it. And then if you have used it, make sure you export those and back them up and keep them safe. Um, yeah. So I, I, and I'll be honest, I did it with a couple of things just to try it and see how it all works as I experiment with things. And it becomes almost a pain sometimes because as you use those items, you always have to say, is it locked? Is it unlocked? Do you want people in there? And they do a great job of making sure that you're as safe as possible using it, but it creates extra layers and work to do it. Um, so again, if you don't need it, don't use it. If you did use it, you probably know about it. Make sure you back it all up. Yeah, this is a, this is a touchy area. So uh, yeah. if, if you get in here, you can screw some things, uh, screw, screw some things up or lose some data, or lo not data, but but uh, uh, right. some of your work. Just, you need to be very careful. Yeah, it can cause you a heartache that you didn't need or intend to have. 
we have to make it secure. We have to do certain things. And because of that, you can put yourself into a position if you forget the password or don't send it along. Absolutely. So, so, okay, um, perfect. Ooh, look at that. Ooh, look so at we, that. we covered all the items and it, it's one of my rare webinars that I was actually <laughs> a little bit short, but if people have questions, post up your questions. If, you, if you're not sure how it all works, we can jump into some live data. We can look at the different, um, if there's any subtleties that maybe you didn't understand or anything, just uh, questions, we'll uh, jump on them. And as they're doing that, if you read Robbie's uh, last um, chat uh, in the chat box, he says, and, and we cannot, we AIM uh, USA, AIM North America, we cannot retrieve that locked information for you to fix it. We can only wipe it out and start from scratch. So uh, uh, if you decide to use some of that, uh, those security things, uh, you take the correct steps. So. Right. Okay. Any uh, waiting for any questions? Anything else, Matt, that you want to uh, to recover? We do have Ray Studio open if we wanted to jump in there, but we uh, we're, we're not that far ahead. We, we we've only got right. a minute or two. So. No, I I think we we covered a lot. I think we gave people a lot of uh, good information. I like that Robbie just posted up a bunch of the sample videos or um, sample data and video files that people can grab. So maybe if you haven't tried out Race Studio 3 production or you haven't been in the beta too much, grab the data, open it up. Um, you get to try out how to import it. There's video files there. So maybe download two of them, practice the import, and then practice the download. See how it does it different and, and do that little bit of experimentation. Um, it's one that James talked about in the last webinar where he was discussing um, how to kind of personalize Race Studio 3 and make it work for you. This is another chance, like James said, to click around, to play with the software, to see how the different features work. Um, I know my next session that I do, I'm going to drag and drop stuff in because it's not the way I usually work. And it's just a different way to do it. Maybe it'll be something I really like. And the the video the the sample data that Robbie has linked in the in the in the chat box. Those of you watching this later on YouTube, it will be there will be links to those three data and video files that are available for you if you haven't used Race Studio three before. You don't have any data to download out of your car. These are these are data files and video files that you can import in and 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 start to uh, start to implement a lot of the stuff that we've talked about here. There's a uh, there's a file from uh, Matt, uh, a couple of files of Matt's, one from Lime Rock, one from Watkins Glen, and then there's a file from uh, from um, Brick that he went on a track day on his Subaru that uh, at VIR. So there's some cool tracks to look at the data uh, and, uh, and and just to play around and and start to understand and learn the different things. Those links will be uh, along with a lot of other links will be in the description box of the YouTube uh, video below. So, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. So, yeah, a, a good chance. Grab those data files. Check out some of the previous ones. Um, as people have questions or anything, if you have trouble importing or exporting, please let us know, and and we can help you out with how to do this and make that transition as easy as possible. Yeah, that that whole point of uh, before I go to the next slide and kind of start working our way out. That the point of 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 starting and thinking through the, if I can get back to it really quickly, it, it should stand out to me. It was right there, but I want to do this one. The point of getting everything under a single folder on your hard drive and, and beginning this process, it's such a great time to do that when you're transitioning over to a, to a new piece of software where you're building everything the way that it uh, is going to be for a long time on your computer. Being able to do that is going to be uh, is going to be fantastic, and and uh, it's something I tried to do when when we first started Race Studio Three. I ended up with everything under one uh, AIM Sports uh, folder, the the root one, right? So if it's AIM, uh, there'll be an AIM uh, folder, and then there's a Race Studio Three folder. And then I put my data just right in that same route and all of the data profile sensors are in right in that one area. And I back that file up uh, nightly on my on uh, internal backup. I have two, two hard drives on my computer, my desktop, and those are just scheduled to back up all the time. But if you're doing it on the cloud or, or uh, on a laptop or something, obviously you follow whatever works best for you, but having them in a single folder is, is very, very helpful. So, okay. So with that, Let's go uh, kind of talk about the YouTube thing and we'll kind of start to wrap this one up if I can get there without jumping past. There we go. The um, all of the videos that were that were uh, uh, 
that we have created, plus a whole bunch of uh, ones earlier, all going to be out on the on the uh, YouTube site. Um, right now we're at 198 of them. This will be 198, and this one will be up on that YouTube site uh, within an hour, hour and a half. It just takes a while to to, to upload it and get it to, to get it configured, and then upload it and 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 the descriptions written and all that stuff. But it'll be up there. Uh, plus all the rest of them that we already have. So it'll be uh, um, always there for you and uh, great stuff. And, and again, upcoming things that we're uh, getting ready to do that are all about Ray Studio 3. Now that it's production, we're, we're hitting it just uh, very, very focused on, on, on bigger picture stuff like this and then focusing in on, on individual features and, uh, and we'll continue to do that. So keep looking for that. Um, you know, customer customer support. Uh, all of our guys are just running. Uh, it's it's fairly early in the year already, and uh, everybody has been uh, on the road at racetracks, just uh, going like crazy already here from AIM. And uh, uh, take a look and see if you can find them out there and uh, give them a give them an ice water when they walk by, because they're they're probably thirsty, right? So uh, uh, if if you're at the event and you see them, if you, if you don't run into us in an event, give us a call, 800-718-9090 to the tech line, uh, and, uh, and let us help you that way, or of course, email and, uh, and other things like that. So the, um, the next function, we talked about it briefly earlier, but the next, uh, the, the next webinar that we're gonna do is gonna talk all about the new math, uh, Ray Studio 3 math channel function. <coughs> Pardon me. We're gonna have uh, Emiliano, who is the uh, is on the AIM Sportline software team? He's the head of it, and we're also going to have a a, a new um, uh, co-host with us, a, a co a co-worker of uh, Emiliano's. Filippo will be joining us. Filippo has worked a lot on the math channel function. And I think you're going to like Filippo quite a bit. He's a he's a fun guy, super smart, uh, as as all of the guys there at AIM are. So uh, he's going to come join us, and we're going to talk about the math channel function, kind of from the word go. Maybe do a little bit of uh, comparison of the Ray Studio 2 uh, for, for, that you're used to coming into Ray Studio 3 and then, uh, hey, here it is. This is what it looks like. And we'll go through some samples and, and show you some of the different power of the Ray Studio 3 uh, math, math channels. So looking forward to that next week. So everybody uh, join us for that one. The um, Some contact information as we're kind of closing this one out. Um, I know I've uh, mentioned a couple of times that uh, if anybody needs to get a hold of me, there's my email address. Of course, Matt's uh, email address down there below. Matt uh, has worked with uh, with a lot of the folks that are listening here live here today, and of course, uh, the, many of the people that are watching it later on YouTube. Matt Matt uh, does does a ton of uh, support um, of the product and the software. So, Matt, anything else that you would like to uh, to add as we kind of close this one up? No, thanks for having me. Thanks for for everybody watching and, and going through all this. I hope it helps you make that transition pretty easy. And like I said, if you have any trouble or questions as you do it shoot one of us an email and we'll make sure you, you can make that transition as easy as possible and no you do not have to speak italian for next week where uh, you know they uh, uh we, i did have a few comments a while back uh emiliano's microphone didn't work well and and of course he's got uh, uh he, he's speaking to us in a, in a in a second language uh and he does a fantastic job and 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 so does filippo but the uh uh, the microphone was as big a problem as what we were having before. So we've got uh, got some of the technical problems figured out, so it'll all be good. The, um, um, the uh, I had something else I wanted to, to throw in there. Darn it. But it, it, all good. Let us know if there's anything else that you might want to, uh, to see. Please share those with me as time goes on. Any functionality that, uh, that is... Uh, that works for you and and uh, you think you would like to see it would be great to have some more some more comments from you guys so I appreciate it Matt thank you very much for doing this again I appreciate it very much uh, uh, and looking forward to next week and and the weeks coming from there and we'll get Matt to join us on uh, a couple of those uh, those other functionality stuff as well the uh, uh, I think he secretly likes to do these more than what he even shares. So no, no, the, uh, it's all good. Thanks everybody. I appreciate it. And we will see you next Tuesday.